All right, guys, out here. All right, start every video with all right. That's exactly what I do. All right, guys. All right, all right, all right. What's up? What's going on? All right. So, anyways, we're out here rigging up for some summertime bass fishing, and just kind of got back from a tournament, changing up a few baits because obviously was doing some Tennessee River ledge fishing, and now we're doing a little bit different stuff because we are on an entirely different river system, and the fish are kind of in some different patterns. So I was rigging up a little bit. And Miss Hunter said, hey, why don't you film a video that goes over every single knot you tie since you're tying all these knots at one time. And I'm going to tell you, I tie about four different knots, period. One of them is a leader knot tying like 10-pound shooter to this braid right here. This is the SX-1 braid. And then I tie one for fluorocarbon straight. I tie one for fluorocarbon flipping. And then I tie one for braid. So four different knots is all I tie. Number one, a lot of people tie the FG knot for a spinning reel i don't i just i've been tying this knot for so long and have had almost no problems out of it like literally if i tie this knot correctly I have almost no problems out of it so i just haven't changed if i have an issue with it then i would change but for the time being i've not had any problems with it. all right so this right here is the albright knot a lot of people tie the fg and I like to tie the Albright. I've never had any problems with it, so I just keep tying it. I will change if I ever start having problems, but so far, so good. So I take the leader line, which is the 10-pound fluorocarbon in this instance, and I make a little loop with it. Run the braid through the loop, and then I grab it right here. When I run it through the loop, I don't normally do it exactly this way, but I'm trying to hold my hands in frame, and grab the braid. So I run it through the loop, pinch it all off where the braid is stuck in the middle, of the leader that's fold over then i wrap it back down itself away from the loop eight times that's five six seven eight and whenever i get to eight i take it and i put my fingers right here and i pinch it off on this side so it cannot unravel then i wrap it back over itself one two three four five then after i do that i take the braid and i put it back through the loop that i made very first I get interrupted by a full wheeler for a second, and then I tie it, wet it, pull it back down, and you want to make sure that everything cascades onto itself and there's nothing noticeably over itself. So you can see right there, everything's just kind of buttoned up, super snug to each other. That's the knot that I tie. I mean, I've heard the FG is really good, literally have never tied it and not had much problems out of this one. So I just cut the tag in right there with the fluorocarbon, try to get the fluorocarbon tag in pretty short the braid tag in is not quite as important because it comes in it doesn't hit whenever you're casting it it hits whenever you're reeling it back in so it's not as big of a deal so that's my leader knot that i tie on braid to fluorocarbon and then i'll pull out about one two and then right there that's usually about i don't know 11 foot of line or something like that then i'll grab my spinning pole reel it on up so i got I ain't got line laying everywhere and I'm gonna tie on a drop shot right now so this is the fluorocarbon knot that I tie all the time but some people I get questions a lot people are like how do you tie it on a drop shot I'm like well it's simple like it's not hard at all to tie it on a drop shot I put the line through the hook eye run it I leave it with a drop shot you need a lot of slack so run it back through the hook eye and I get the loop kind of small but I like you know about like that so I got that this leader right here is gonna be my leader that my weights on that's the one that's hanging down so I take it got it in there now I take the fluorocarbon and I wrap it around my fingers like this so that I've got a loop made and as soon as I get a loop made hold the hook still and I wrap that loop that I had made and then I have the original loop and I wrap it around three times around the loop that I made with my fingers. But that's not the important part for this one. I wrap it three times. I always crimp it with my teeth so it goes back through the loop a little bit cleaner. Put it through the loop that's on top of the fluorocarbon. On top of the knot. And you can see how my line, before I cinch down that knot, my line's coming out the very top of the knot. You can see that how the tag end's coming out the top of the knot. Wet it. Pull it down tight. Now, there we go. Now, I take this and I cut off the loop. Then I take the tag end that I had and I run it back through 
the drop shot hook, stand the, the knot up so the knot's standing straight up. What that does is kicks your hook out at all times. But anyways, that's simple. That's how I, now I have rigged up a leader and a drop shot. You see how that hook is kicked straight out? Exactly what you want for a drop shot. Now that is the knot that I tie on fluorocarbon all the time. I just showed it to y'all in that so y'all can see how I just cut that loop off, leaving the longer tag in, and that's what I do for a drop shot. So now we've got, what do we got tied? We got one rod rigged up, we got our leader knot, and then we've got our fluorocarbon knot. So the next thing we'll do is I'm gonna show y'all the fluorocarbon knot once again, but the way that I tie it most of the time, which is going to be right here on this rod right here. This is 20 pound Sunline Shooter, probably a little bit easier to see. And then I've got a little ace jig right here I'm gonna tie it to, but anyways, pretty simple through the eye, turn around, back through. I've got a loop made on this side. Obviously, you can see there's a loop that's around my finger. Now, I always switch hands. I put the loop in my left hand. Take the, this is main line and the tag in. I wrap it around my right index finger. Take it this way, going with the flow, and I wrap it around the other side of my right index finger. Then I take this loop right here, the original loop that we made, because it from where it was ran through and I wrap it let me see if I can get it now one what's going on here two three wrap it three times around the loop that I made around my finger push it that's why I crimped the line with my tooth a little bit push it back through and you can see again how my tag ends are all running out the top of the knot. What that does is, whenever you cinch this bait down, you gotta pull the tag in and the main line. But whenever you cinch this bait down, there is no tag in underneath the knot. Whereas if you tie a clinch knot or an improved clinch knot, you twist it up and you put your tag in underneath the knot. Now when you set the hook, you're tightening that knot down even tighter because you're putting as much pressure on it as that line can pretty much take. And when you have something underneath the knot around the eye of the hook and you're not on top of it, it burns that piece of fluorocarbon that's underneath the knot. It'll burn it on the hook set. So you can see how on this one, all my tag ends come out the top of the knot. So whenever that knot cinches down, it's just hitting that metal that's on that line tie. So whenever it does that, it just cinches down even tighter and it does not burn anything because there's nothing underneath it because it's all wrapped around and cinched down. And then all the, all the stuff that's twisted is on the top of the knot and that gives it a little bit more strength. So that's the three tag in knot, the double pits in the San Diego jam, double San Diego jam, whatever you want to call it. It's got multiple names. I call it the double pits in. That's what I've always heard it called. As far as the actual correct term, a San Diego jam that I've seen a little, varies a little bit from that, but that's it. That's my fluorocarbon knot. Now, move on to my last knot that I tie with fluorocarbon. This is my flipping knot. Snail knot, whatever you want to call it. I already got a bobber stop on here. This is an untamed tackle bobber stop, but, you know, a lot of them are the same. I like the untamed ones, though. Half ounce piece of tungsten. All good. Simple. Standard. Moving along. Got that on there. And then, boom. Five volt gamakatsu straight shank hook. And this is when a snail knot excels. It's on a straight shank hook. I run it through over the eye of the hook. Eye of the hook needs to be facing towards the line that you're putting through. Run it through the front of the front of the hook. Take some slack out. It's going through the front of the hook. I lay it down the shank of the hook. Grab it with my fingers. So I, the line's going through this and laying down the shank of the hook. Then I grab the line, take it back up, and wrap it around the hook keeper. And you can see I take it around that hook keeper and I do it about seven or eight times. Two, three four five and if you're using big line you got to kind of manage it yourself this is a 22 pound shooter i don't know how many wraps i've done but i think that's about seven so i wrapped it y'all seen how whenever i wrapped it around that hook shank it was going up towards the eye of the hook that's what you want so i just pinch it all off with my fingers everything's tight it's not going to go anywhere take that tag in that's now wrapped up the hook and i put it through that loop that i made by laying that hook that line down the shank of the hook laid that line down, made a loop with it, wrapped it up, and I put it back through that loop that I made. Tighten it down just to get it a little bit snug, not burn anything or anything like that. Then I wet it a little bit. I pull relatively tight with the main line, and then I pull extremely tight with the 
tag in and then I pull very tight with the main line again and I feel like that seats that knot where I want it to be seated which is a little bit lower on that hook because whenever I get it a little bit tight with the main line it pulls that knot up a little bit then when I pull it with the tag in it pulls that knot down to where I want it to be on the shank of that hook and then it stays in place when I pull it the third time and I just tighten it way down so that is my snail knot and if you don't know why you would want to tie a snail knot, and there's a lot of debate going on about this, I don't care what nobody says. I tie a snail knot. I've had people tell me forever, you won't lose them if you tie a snail knot. Guess what? You're going to lose some. I don't care. I got back from, uh, where, was, where was we at this year? I lost some. Um, I don't remember. But I lost some, where was it last year? At the Classic last year, I lost some. I lost quite a few, you know, flipping bushes. You're just going to lose some flipping bushes. But... I had some of my buddies that fish the elites. They're like, don't snail, don't tie a snail knot. You lose every fish that bites it if you snail knot it. Well, I can tell you for sure that ain't true. But I went home, tied a regular knot, and lost them even worse is what I felt like. So usually when they eat it good, you hook them really good with the snail knot. But the reason you want to tie a snail knot is whenever that bait's in the roof of that fish's mouth, and then you set the hook, and that tungsten hits that fish in the mouth, that hook just kicks up just like this. You see how it kicks out? Kicks out. And then it has a little bit better trajectory for hooking those fish in the roof of the mouth. So I've tried it both ways. I, you know, you go on spurts where you just lose fish. That's just how it is. Whenever I start losing a couple, I might tie, you know, something besides a snail to go back to my other fluorocarbon knot. And then when I lose a couple on that, I tie a snail again. But I'm pretty much dead set. I tie a snail when I'm flipping forever. Just catch it, caught a bunch of fish doing it. I've got the most confidence in it. And that's my fluorocarbon flipping knot. Now, all reliable. In my opinion, is a polymer knot. But I don't think it's too dang reliable, especially not with fluorocarbon. But with braid, it's a really, really good knot. So, got me a spro popping frog right here. This is the only type of line where I tie polymer is right here, braid. And I like bigger braid for it because it does still burn itself a little. But pretty simple, you run it through. And with braid, you don't have to be quite as careful about not wrapping the, the line. Like with fluorocarbon, the polymer knot is a decently strong knot, but you have to tie it perfectly. If you make a mistake, that knot is going to break a high percentage of the time. So I think if you, they say a polymer is 100% knot, there's no such thing as 100% knot. But they say that a polymer is 100% knot, and then if you tie it incorrectly, it drops to a 50% knot like that. Well, I don't even want to be tying a knot on fluorocarbon that's that fickle. But anyways, this is a polymer right here. Just same thing as how, how the other one started. You run it through, run it back through. I got a loop in this side. I take this, put it around this finger, like, just like I did. Run it around, boom. Just like I did, tie my other knot. Well, on this one, you take this line and put it through the bottom, making a, let me see if I can grab it. Standard overhand knot. So all I did was make a loop, put the line through there. Standard overhand knot. Then I take the bait and put it through that. And then I pull it down. And one of the, the important things about a polymer is making sure that this part, the loop that went around the bait, is the last thing to cinch down on very top. That's the important part about a polymer. You want to make sure that that loop that you put around comes down on very top and doesn't twist around the sides because then it's going to burn itself even worse. So, cut this off. Boom. And that's it. That's my braid knot. It's just a polymer knot. Just like that. Pretty simple. Pretty standard, but that's the one I tie on braid. Everybody ties it on fluorocarbon. That's fine. A lot of people who tie it correctly, it, do, it doesn't break all the time. It's all good. I have no problem with it at all. If you want to tie it, you don't have any problems, that's good. I just don't tie it for fluorocarbon, but I do tie it for braid. So that's my, was it, how many was that? Four knots. Four knots that I tie, period. That's it. I don't tie anymore. That's all I tie. All year long, I tie four knots. Appreciate y'all watching. And... If y'all tie a different knot, you think one of these knots are bogus, weak, whatever you want to call it, let me know. Would say, tell me if that knot sucks, I tie this one. And I might take your knot, tie it, and test it. See if I can break it with my hands or not and just see. So I like testing knots. I, I like playing with stuff. But let me know what knot you tie if you don't like these. And I'm pretty bad at explaining stuff like this. I feel like I'm not that good at explaining it. So if it's hard to keep up with, just ignore what I'm saying and just try to look at what my hands are doing, I guess, will be the better, better approach. But I appreciate y'all watching. And we'll see y'all in the next one.